Hello, welcome to Timely Word and Prayer for Day 181, the 181st day of the year. And this is the sixth day of the 26th week. Um, the sixth day is, is a day to remember that God made man in his image. Every day is Remembrance Day. Um, the first day we remember that God made light, I mean, yeah, called light into existence. On the second day, he made the firmament. Um, so he, make, he makes it way where there is no way in the second day. And then on the third day, we, this is a day of resurrection. This is a day of, of resurrection. The fourth day is a day that he made the luminaries. Um, on the fifth day, he made the sea creatures. On the sixth day, God made man in his image. But he also made other uh, creatures, other land creatures. So the sixth day is a time to remember what God did on the sixth day. And we find that in Genesis uh, chapter 1, um, Genesis chapter 1, we go to verse 24 um, to see what God did on the sixth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to his kind, cattle and creeping thing and the beast of the earth, each according to his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to his kind, cattle according to his kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to his kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose uh, fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food also to every beast of the field to every kind every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life I have given every green herb for food and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So on the sixth day, we remember what God, we see what God did. On the sixth day, he made the land creatures, and he also made man in his image and likeness. The fact that God made man in his image shows that he did not make the other creatures in his image. So when we try to apply it to man, because all this, all that God did at creation, we can apply to man. So when we try to apply this to man, it just shows us that there are two kinds of human beings, those in the image of God and those who have the image of the devil. That is, those who have, whose nature is ungodliness those whose way is the way of godliness. So in the six season, these are the two kinds of people that you see manifesting. You see ungodliness and you also see godliness. And when God made these creatures on the sixth day, he gave dominion to the godly. So in every six season, God knows there is going to be conflict, but he has given it to the godly to dominate the ungodly. That's what happens. So it's a season of conflict. So when you look at look at the sixth book of the Bible, Israel representing the godly dominated the Canaanite nations, the ungodly. So that's what happened. In Esther chapter 6, Mordecai, the godly, dominated Haman, the ungodly. In Judges chapter 6, Gideon, the godly, was called to dominate the ungodly Midianites. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel, the godly, 
dominated the lions and um, all the other ungodly uh, colleagues. So God gives authority to the godly to uh, dominate in the sixth season. In Second Kings chapter 6, Elisha, the godly, dominated the Syrian troops that came to arrest him who were the ungodly. So in every sixth season, this is the will of God. So when Ephesians chapter 6 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand it, you know, the, the, the schemes, that you may be able to stand against the, the, the schemes of the devil, meaning you are the godly, put on the armor of God so you'll be able to withstand the devil who is the ungodly. So in the sixth season, we have the battle between the godly and the godly. And this plays out in, in real life. It plays out in real life. Yeah, it does. Within the six, seven years of the 20th, 20th century, that's when the Second World War broke out. The Allied forces and the Axis forces. And <laughs> he's... One part represents the godly, the other part represents the ungodly, some who don't even believe in God, you know, who don't believe in anything God, don't believe in the Bible, don't believe in, you know, uh, don't believe in having Jews alive. So you see that. So in every six is in that place. Out. So this is the sixth day of the 26th week and we are thinking about the same thing. That means there is a day of conflict between the godly and the ungodly. But the truth is that God has given authority to the godly. God has given authority, given you. You are the godly. God has given you authority to dominate in this season. God has given you authority to dominate in this season because you are the godly. So in every sixth season, God looks out for his image in man. Say, where is my image? Where is my people? So that's what we have in mind. That this is a day of dominion for the godly. This is a day to stand for God and represent him um, in the conflict against ungodliness, in the conflict against rebellion. And um, victory belongs to us. And so, and God provided for the godly. God provided for man. He said, look, I have given you told man, I have given you food. So you're not supposed to worry about this. Because that's another thing you find that in every sixth season, you know, food is an issue. Food is an issue. In every sixth season, food is an issue. The sixth, sixth year in every seven years. Sixth year in every seven years. Six forty-nine years. I mean, six seven years in every forty-nine years. I say it again: six year in every seven years, six seven years in every forty-nine years, and six forty-nine years in every three hundred and thirty-four years. These are six seasons. So, food is an issue. Um, um, so, the economy. People need to open eyes for the economy and see that the economy is not hurt anyhow and that people are cared for as they go through this. So that's why Jesus will say, Matthew chapter 6 said, take note of saying, what shall you eat and what shall we drink? In Second Kings chapter 6, women were ready to boil their children and eat. And in Joshua, Joshua the, the sixth book of the Bible, God calls the land of Canaan the land that flows with milk and honey. Every sixth season, you see God, uh, God gives attention to food. He gives attention to food, beginning from the sixth day of creation. So this is the will of God that the godly should have dominion um, over the ungodly. That's, that's what you set your heart today, that it doesn't matter what happens. This is my day of dominion. This is my day of to triumph. This is my day to subdue. By the grace of no, no, by the grace of God, I will not be under. By the grace of God, I'm not supposed to be defeated. By the grace of God, I will not be dominated. I will have dominion over uh, whatever does not bear the semblance of God around me in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. So that is where we go uh, this day. So 
Um, we have the we have the sixth the six seven chapters of the book of Ezekiel from chapter six, and we see how God um, turned to Israel. In chapter six, God blessed Israel, began a blessing on Israel, and turned against those who were against Israel. The story has changed. It's not just now attacking the children of Israel, you know, or, or confronting them, or speaking against them, or prophesying against them. But now God turns to, you know, bring his people up. In chapter 36, it said, And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, because the enemy has said of you, Aha, uh -huh, the ancient highs have become our possession. Therefore prophesy and say to, and say, thus says the Lord, because they made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side so that you became the possession of the rest of the nations and you are taken up by the leaves of talkers and slandered by the people. Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the valleys, the desolate, waters and the cities that have been forsaken which have become plundered and mockery which have become plunder and mockery to the rest of the nations all around therefore thus says the lord surely i have spoken in my burning jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all edom who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and spiteful minds in order to plunder its open country. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel. Say to the mountains, the hills, the rivers, and the valleys, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury, because you have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore thus says the Lord, I have raised my hand in an oath, that surely the nations that are around you shall bear their own shame. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches, and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they are about to come. For indeed, I am for you, and I will turn to you, and you shall be tilled and sown. I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the ruins rebuilt. I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bear young. And I will make you inhabited as the former cities, and do better for you than at your beginnings, then you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, this is a promise God is rebuilding his image. God is rebuilding, God is returning to his people to restore his people, to rebuild, to recover his image in his people. So, so it begins here with a prophecy, speak to these people, speak comfort to them. Tell them that I'm about to rebuild, I'm about to restore them. So that's what God does in the sixth. God, you know, comes to his people, those who represent them, and that's when he, he comes to raise them up. So that's what we find. In Ezekiel 37, we see God gives Ezekiel a vision in this direction. I'm about to raise my people to become a mighty army. So in Ezekiel 37, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and said to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely I will cause bread to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly you know, rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them and there was no breath in them. And so he prophesied again. He said to me, prophesy to the bread, prophesy, son of man, to the bread. And said, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O bread, and break 
on this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and the and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. This is the image of God being restored. God you know, looks in the direction of his image. God is seeking his image and God is restoring Israel, his image. That's what we have here. So you see, now in, the, in chapter 38, we see this nation coming under attack. Can you see? There's a conflict that is arising. In chapter 36 and chapter 37, God walked on his image. It's like he made man in his image afresh. He blessed Israel and now he resurrected Israel by the prophecy of Eli, you know, Ezekiel, the valley of dry bones, just like God made man from dust. He God spoke to these dry bones and they became a mighty army. And now in chapter 38 and chapter 39, the armies of Gog and Magog will rise against them, but they are going to be smitten because in the sixth season, God gives authority, God gives dominion to the godly. What am I trying to say? As you come into this sixth day of the 26th week, the, the enemies of Gog and Magog will not prevail against you. The enemies, the wicked will not rise, I mean, will not prevail against you. They may rise up, but you're going to beat them down in the mighty name of Jesus. As Israel subdued uh, the Gog, the Gog of the land of Magog, and uh, the princes of Bosch, Meshach, and Tubal, you know, that is how God will give you dominion. So in chapter 39, Gog's armies are destroyed. That is the will of God. That every conflict that arises against you today, you will prevail. That's the will of God. You will dominate. That's the, the will of God is for you to dominate. In the name of Jesus, Father, we stand upon this word that this is the day of the dominion of the godly. Let it become an experience that your people will triumph, that no evil thing will rise up and prevail against your people today in the mighty name of Jesus. Then in chapter 40, uh, from chapter 40, God begins, God begins to give a revelation of the new temple. God's men are like living temples. So God is now talking about his tabernacle on earth. That's what God's people are supposed to be, the tabernacle of God on earth. So in chapter 40, in chapter 41, and in chapter, in chapter 40, the vision of a new city and a new temple, God gave that. Um, God gave that to give hope to his people that he is restoring things and then in chapter 41, you know, God began to give the dimensions of the temple, you know, to give measurements. And then in chapter 2, you know, God is speaking about the different chambers that will be in the temple. So this is a day of restoration. This is a day of recovery. At the time that Ezekiel is prophesying, things are not okay. Let me read chapter 40 for you. In the 25th year of our captivity, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, the 14th year after the city was captured, on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he took me there. In the visions of God, he took me into the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain. On it, toward the south, was something like a structure of a city. You know, the destruction has happened and while destruction was happening, God was giving Ezekiel a vision of a newly constructed city, a new city and a new temple. Say, meaning that don't look at the ruins, look at the future. God is restoring something, restoring what was destroyed. So I think that that's what God is doing. To, that's a word to somebody that this is a day of restoration. This is a day of restoration. Yes, this is a day of restoration. For somebody, things that have been pulled down, the things that have been destroyed, God is restoring them today. Father, we give thanks to you. Thank you for this restoration that is happening. You are rebuilding the ruins. You are bringing back, you are bringing the dead back in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray that you will enjoy this sixth day of the 26th week. It is a day of restoration. God bless you.